Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my talk. Today, I will introduce to you how biocytogens, humanized immunoglobulin mouse platforms, can facilitate the discovery of novel therapeutic antibodies. Biocytogen is a biotech company that provides integrated technology platforms. The headquarter is in Beijing. It has over 1,000 employees worldwide, including Boston site, which was established in 2018. Over the past 10 years, we have worked with more than 1,500 academic and 500 industry clients on four areas. Gene editing, genetic modified animal and cell models, preclinical studies, and antibody discovery. These four platforms are integrated to form a comprehensive power engine that have facilitated the success of hundreds of antibody discovery projects. For every stage of the antibody discovery process, Biocytogen provides a set of mouse models that are specifically designed. For antibody hit generation, we have immunoglobulin humanized mouse models. We have established two generations. First is RenMap, second is RenLite and RenMap Hits platform. I will show you some new exciting data for RenLite and RenMap Hits platforms later in this presentation. For lead optimization, we offer target humanized mouse models, such as immuno-oncology target humanized mouse and cytokine and cytokine receptor humanized mouse models. For candidate selection, we have immune system humanized mouse models. Why do we use immunoglobulin humanized mice? The force of natural evolution determines the intrinsic complexity of our immune system that can't be surpassed by in vitro design. In immunoglobulin humanized mice, the in vivo selection, differentiation, and affinity maturation cannot be recapitulated in vitro. The well-evolved immune system generates in vivo antibodies with less immunogenicity, high antigen binding affinity, and specificity, as well as better biophysical properties and better developability. The immunoglobulin humanized mice carry full human immunoglobulin repertoire, which gives the human-like epitope and sequence diversity. All these benefits brings a shorter development timeline and higher clinical translation. Our red mice family contains two immunoglobulin humanized mouse models. First one is RedMap, which carries full human heavy chain and copper light chain variable domain. Second one is RedLite, which carries a single common human copper light chain while maintaining the full human heavy chain repertoire. RenLight is designed specifically for bispecific antibody discovery. RenMap Mouse is the first generation for our immunoglobulin humanized mouse platform. In RenMap Mouse, the 2.6 megabase mouse heavy chain variable domain gene was replaced in situ with full human VDJ loci, which is 1 megabase that includes all 123 to 129 V genes, all D genes and J genes. In light chain, which shown on the right figure, the whole mouse kappa, uh, kappa chain VJ segments were replaced in situ with full human kappa light chain VJ loci, including both the distal and proximal V clusters. The lambda light chain is an undisrupted and a mouse constant region is maintained to ensure proper B cell development and a robust immune response. During COVID-19 pandemic, like many other biotech companies and pharmaceutical companies, Biocytogen has also initiated a campaign of generating neutralizing antibodies against SARS-CoV-2 virus. Two groups of RenMap mice were immunized with different immunization strategies, protein immunization and DNA immunization. And two discovery platforms were used, hybridoma and single B-cell cloning. This campaign generated a rich list of high affinity binders, among which eight best hits were identified. These eight antibodies not only block the spike in human ACE2 interaction, but also have high affinity against RBD domain. These hits also successfully block pseudovirus infection of a a human ACE2 expressing cell line, as well as human ACE2 transgenic mice. As this table shows, the affinity of these antibodies are all at nanomolar to subnanomolar range. 
Not only do these antibodies functionally neutralize the SARS-CoV-2 virus with a high affinity, they also showed high epitope diversity. Synergetic assays showed that clone B2 and B5 here recognize distinct epitopes within RBD domain. When used together, they inhibit virus infection more dramatically. Therefore, these two clones can be used as cocktail treatment for COVID-19 patients. These antibodies also showed solid drug-like properties. As the thermal stability measured by DSF, hydrophobicity measured by HICHPLC, and isoelectric point by IEF. Biocytogen has a very strong gene editing technology platform. This makes it possible for us to further engineer the RedMap mouse. Here we introduce to you second generation of RedMap, the RedMap HITS platform which consists of a library of RedMap mice, each with a specific target gene knocked out. Why do we need RedMap knockout mice? When generating antibodies, one common issue is the high homology between human pro mouse proteins. In this case, when we knock out the target gene in the mouse, the immune tolerance is broken and a much stronger immune response is elicited. The same strategies can be used also for challenging targets such as GPCRs and ion channels. RedMap hits mice can also generate antibodies that binds to broader epitopes for a specific target. Additionally, it is very useful to generate antibody candidates that react to both human and other species used for preclinical studies. Therefore, there will be no need to make surrogate antibodies for preclinical study. This is an example of the RedMap HITS project. Target A is a highly homologous protein between human and mice. When immunized target A protein in RedMap mice, the titer is about 1000. But in RedMap HITS mice, the titer is much higher. We can see at 1 to 10,000 dilution rate, there are still substantial signals. The right figure summarizes the MFI level comparison between the two groups of mice. RedMap hits mice has much higher MFI once target A is knocked out. This data indicates that once the immune, risk, uh, immune tolerance is broken, the RedMap hits mice show a more robust immune response towards the target. And therefore, these mice can generate high quality hits with subnanomolar affinity and more diversified epitope binding. RedMap hits mice also generate antibody hits with higher cross-species reactivity. In this project, RedMap and RedMap hits mice were immunized with target B or target C, which have sequence homology of 61% and 86% between human mouse species, respectively. The number of positive B cells that were harvested are compared in the left figure. The percentage of cross-species reactive B cells were compared in the right figure. We can see that for both target B and target C immunization, RedMap hits mice show higher response against the antigen, which is reflected by the increased number of total positive B cells. And among these positive B cells, RedMap hits mice have a greater percentage that are cross-reactive to both human and mouse target protein. In our RedMap website, we have a RedMap HITS platform page. In this page, you can see the status overview of target knockout mice. Right now, we have nearly 700 targets that have been knocked out in RedMap mice. Once the RedMap HITS mice are homozygous, they are moved forward with immunization followed by antibody discovery, in vitro and in vivo development. The number of mice at each stage is listed here. Among these 700 targets, 11 target hits mice have been exclusively licensed out. All targets that are under development are categorized by therapeutic areas. The majority of the targets are immune oncology targets, and this, hit, and this list is um, expanding as we speak. Biocytogen plans to generate a library of near 1,000 targets of RedMap hits mice to meet the expanding market needs. We welcome partnership and collaboration opportunities at any stage of the development. Please visit our website to see if your target of interest is in the list.
If not, we can generate the, uh, the, the hit remap mice specifically for your target and establish a productive and collaborative partnership with you. Now I would like to introduce our common light chain red light mouse platform. Red light mouse is designed for advancing bispecific and multispecific antibody discovery and solving the common issues of the bispecific antibody discovery process, immunogenicity, and chain mispairing. Natural in vivo selection, affinity maturation using a heavy uh, using a human heavy chain repertoire reduces the immunogenicity of the bispecific antibodies. At the same time, it allows an efficient construction of different heavy chain variable domain that share the same light chain. Therefore, red light mice can save time and effort by avoiding the later stage intensive engineering that is usually required to ensure the right combination of the heavy and light chains and to reduce immunogenicity. Here is the illustration of red light mouse humanization. First, the heavy chain on the left side. Similar as RENMAB, whole mouse heavy chain variable domain was knocked out and replaced with entire 1.0 megabase human VDJ segments inside you. For light chain, whole mouse kappa VJ segments were knocked out and replaced with single human VJ gene inside you. We select human V kappa germline 3-11 as common light chain after thorough consideration. First, Based on the distribution of germline usage of VHVL pairing in natural human immune repertoire, 3-11 is one of the most used light chain. Also, based on the drug light property assessment and canonical structure analysis. Lastly, based on productivity assessment in clinical assets and various antibody discovery campaigns. Red light mice carry a common human light chain and a full human heavy chain variable VDJ segments. With the fixed light chain gene, these cells from red light mice still develop a full human heavy chain diversity repertoire. As this data shows, all 46 functional V genes, 25 D genes, and 6 J genes are observed in red light mice heavy chain diversity study. The CDR3 analysis of antibodies derived from red light mice also showed a very human like CDR3 length and amino acid composition patterns, such as the length-dependent tyrosine usage. So how does the common light chain function in the development of B cells? Since fixed light chain will not provide much variety during in vivo selection and affinity maturation, one would assume that the common light chain will undergo somatic hypermutation during this process. We tested the hypermutation rate in the naive red light mice. Here we can see that Near 75% light chain has no mutation, and about 20% has one mutation. As a result, totally 95% of light chain has one or no mutation. The majority of the B cells from red light mice use the kappa common light chain instead of lambda light chain. Here we have a case study where we compare the red light mice side by side with red map and wild type mice in a campaign. In this campaign, all three groups of mice were immunized with the same antigen using same immunization regimen. Their serotitis were tested at the same time. Here we can see red light, red map, and wild type mice have very comparable and robust titers. Once the mice with strong titer are identified, these mice were sacrificed and their lymphoid organs were collected. B cells were isolated and, and then enriched before loading onto beacon instrument for single B cell sorting. Within one day, all the antigen specific B cells were identified and sorted out. These positive B cells were then lysed and their mRNA extracted, followed by single B cell sequencing. Normally, we can recover 70% of the sequence successfully. These sequences were then cloned into expression vectors and validated by quick transient transfection and ELISA testing. For totally 10 to 13 weeks, we can get from immunization to purified recombinant monoclonal antibodies. The Beacon optofluidic system we recently acquired speed up the whole process dramatically. It shortens the discovery turnaround time from months to weeks. There are more advantages of this workflow. For example, the positive antibody sequence were obtained at an early stage, 
to avoid the loss of positive clones during lengthy subcloning or selection procedures uh, that are applied by other platforms. Second, the B cells that we captured already went through affinity maturation. Therefore, the antibody derived from this workflow has high antigen binding affinity. After B consorting, the positive B cells were captured and the numbers were shown in this table. We harvested a couple of hundreds positive cells per chip in this case. And we can see that red map and red light mice produce slightly more positive B cells than wild type mice here. With more than 70% sequence extraction rate, overall we can get antibody sequences from more than 150 positive clones for each group of mice. This yield can be scaled up when we increase the number of chips. How is the post immune repertoire like in red map and red light mice? In this case, we analyzed the antibody germline usage from both RENMAP and RENLIGHT mice. As we can see, both RENMAP and RENLIGHT antibodies show a broad diversity of germline usage. With only one common light chain, it is remarkable that RENLIGHT mice still represent a highly diversified human heavy chain repertoire. For RENLIGHT mice, their B cells will inevitably rely on heavy chain variable domain to generate specific antigen binding, which means the affinity will be affected to some degree. Here we show affinity analysis of antibodies derived from red light mice compared with red map mice. These data are from two different campaigns. On the left is the red light antibody affinity distribution data. We can see that red light antibodies have a broader range of affinity compared to RENMAP antibodies, which usually falls within a narrower range. A wide range of affinity provides flexibility on building antibody formats that requires different degree of binding affinity. Nonetheless, there's strong correlation between antigen immunogenicity and the yield of high affinity clones. As I will show in the next slide, when immunized with antigen that has standard level immunogenicity, red light mice can generate a large number of high binding affinity clones. In this case study, two red light campaigns were performed with target F and target G respectively. Both targets are well-known immuno-oncology targets. Each campaign immunized 10 red light mice with a standard protein immunization regimen. At the end point, more than 1,000 hits were identified and validated in each campaign. We analyzed the affinity of these clones. We can see that among 1,054 hits from target F campaign, there are 366 hits has binding affinity less than one nanomolar, 438 hits between one to 10 nanomolar. For the 1,224 hits from target G campaign, there are 514 hits has binding affinity less than one nanomolar and 512 hits are between 1 to 10 nanomolar. It is exciting that these red light campaigns generate several hundreds of high binding affinity hits, and these data indicate that generating hundreds of high affinity hits by red light mice is quite possible for an average target. During the preclinical development process, a surrogate antibody became necessary to test the candidate antibody in animal models. Since surrogate antibodies are not exactly the same as candidate antibodies. It might cause some issue at later development stage. To avoid these issues, one can generate a candidate antibody that is cross-species reactive and can be used both in mouse or dog or monkey models before testing in human. Can red light mice generate cross-species reactive antibodies in this case? Here is the third case study. We immunize red light mice with a popular immuno-oncology target, protein target X. We use the both human and dog antigen. The homology of the ECD domain between human and dog X protein is 75%. As this flow data shows, at 1 to 100,000 dilution, we can still see stronger titer against human protein X. Once the B consorting is completed, totally 308 antibody sequences were extracted. Among these 308 human positive clones, there are 113 clones cross reactive to dark protein X. This means that red light mice not only solve the issue of pair mismatching, but also can speed up the development process by generating cross species reactive candidates and promote a seamless transition from preclinical to clinical study. 
Next question. How is the epitope binding of red light antibodies? Here is the data from one campaign. The red light antibodies were analyzed by epitope binding. We can see here there are nine different epitopes grouped into four clusters. This phylogenic tree figure shows that these antibody hits bind to diversified epitopes. Although in vivo efficacy testing is usually at a later stage of the development, with the convenience of having a vivarium in-house and pharmacological animal models in-house, we took a quick proof of concept test. In this project, red light antibodies from one campaign were tested in an MC38 engraft tumor model. We can see that some of the hits exhibit strong tumor inhibition in vivo. The blue line here is negative control and the red line is a positive control from our in-house antibody pipeline, which is generated from wild type mice. You can see a major proportion of these antibody hits show similar or even better tumor inhibition efficacy compared to the positive control. This data indicates that red light mice can generate functional anti-tumor antibodies in vivo. To summarize, I have introduced to you the RedMap platform, which provides human heavy and kappa light chain repertoire diversity and enables efficient antibody hit generation with desirable drug-like properties. The RedMap HITS platform conquers challenging targets and facilitates clinical development by generating species cross-reactive antibody candidates. Thirdly, the RedLight platform, which accelerates by specific or multi-specific antibody discovery with common light chain and full human heavy chain repertoire. And these platforms promote the di discovery of functional antibody HITS that exhibit human antibody features and solid drug-like properties. We also have a growing pipeline for clinical assets, and we welcome partnerships on these assets. To support the antibody community, starting from this year, Biocytogen offers antibody discovery service to the public. Our unique integrated platforms allow flexibility of providing end-to-end -end service or customized individual service. We can cover from immunization to preclinical service based on our clients' needs, and we can offer individual service upon request. As I mentioned earlier, our antibody discovery platform uses beacon screening to identify positive antigen binding B cells. The monoclonal development process only takes five to seven weeks after immunization. We have a strong scientist team and have achieved high success project rates so far. What differentiates us from other campaigns? Our beacon optofluidic system shortens the discovery process from months to weeks. We also have additional platforms such as fax-based single B-cell cloning and phage display library technology for combined discovery strategies if necessary. Beside our RedMap Red Light platforms, Biocytogen also has a vast inventory of humanized mouse models for pharmacology and in vivo efficacy service. Overall, our integrated platforms can support you at any stage of your therapeutic antibody development process. Again, we welcome all forms of partnership and collaborations. Please contact me if you are interested in working with us. Thank you for your time. I'd be happy to answer the questions.